Was it a hate crime or a hoax? Law enforcement sources tell CNN the Chicago police now believe that Empire actor Jesse Smollett paid two men to orchestrate an attack on him. Smollett's attorneys deny that the actor played any role in his own attack. So joining us now to talk about all of this is Charles Blow. He's an opinion columnist for The New York Times and Brian Stelter. He's CNN's chief media correspondent. Great to have both of you here. Brian, I remember in the hours right after this happened yeah. that CNN, that our bosses were, were advising to pump the brakes a little bit because there were some things already that didn't add up. I was frankly surprised how many people jumped on board to side with Jesse Smollett before there were photos, before there right. were police statements, before all that stuff. And so how do you think this all, uh, what was the trajectory of how this went wrong? Yeah, the headline was so sensational and so disturbing. It first came out on TMZ, not only that Smollett said he'd been attacked, but that the attack attacker said, this is MAGA country. Well, obviously, Chicago at 2 in the morning is not MAGA country, so that didn't make sense in the first place. Lots of parts of the story didn't make sense. But activists, actors, Hollywood celebrities, friends of Smollett, Democratic presidential candidates, they all wanted to sound like they were doing the right thing, saying the right thing, standing up for a victim. There's an inherent tension in this story between uh, wanting and needing to believe victims and yet knowing that people can take advantage of that, taking advantage of the idea that it's important to, to, to believe victims. And I, that tension has been the story for weeks. There was a rush to judgment. I think it was mostly in the celebrity press and among activists and among Twitter people. Uh, I think it was a really careful reporting by news organizations. But it all gets lumped in together at the end of the day. It all gets lumped in together in the minds of many people who now look at this and say, what went wrong here? And obviously, at the end of the day, what went wrong is that he may have made it up. And ultimately, that's his responsibility. Uh, ultimately, that's right. But Charles, I mean, it's understandable in a context to take a victim's word at first, but there does need to be due diligence. And I want to do two things here. One, I want to put this against the larger context of hate crimes in this country, because in 2017, I believe it is, over 7,000 hate crimes in the United States. Uh, that was up 17% compared to 2016. So it's important to keep that in mind mm. as we confront uh, the possibility that this was a hoax. And, and it's not the only hoax of this kind of nature we've seen. We saw the UVA uh, reporting around with Rolling Stone did, uh, questions, stories out of the Air Force Academy, St. Olaf College. Um, so this is not undiscovered territory, but it raised the question against the backdrop of this being a real problem in the country. Mm. What's the psychology of a hate crime hoax? Why would somebody do that? Because it diminishes the real instances so much. Well, I mean, right, I'm not a psychologist. So I, I, I'll take a stab at this, though. I mean, sure. I, I think that uh, if he did this, and people who do this, I mean, I think you do have to find a villain who your target audience would believe. Mm. And I think that in this case, if this is true, it was very believable that a gay man who could be gay bass. The, the, if you take the celebrity out of this and if you dig down into your hate crime numbers, it is even more stark among people who are queer in this country. Mm -hmm. They are more likely to be assaulted, both sexually and not sexually, uh, and by everybody, including authorities. Uh, and they don't have the, 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 the platform. Uh, many of them are estranged from family, many of them ex uh, experience kind of housing insecurity and food insecurity. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the voice. And so the, the big concern for me is whether or not it impacts those genuine victors and their ability or their willingness to come forward and say something happened. Because very often in cases of assault, sexual and not, there are no witnesses. There is, there, there is no evidence to preserve, mm -hmm. and it is a, a question of character. And in this case, people were making a character judgment. Uh, uh, Jesse is very close to the character he plays on television. He is a musician. He is gay. He has, in his personal life, he has been involved in some very worthy uh, uh, kind of community actions, including most recently trying to save a, a historically black women's college in the yeah. South, Ben and college. He does that sort of thing. So if people were making a gut level decision about, is this a character who I believe, why would he, the question of motive is still uh, murky. Yeah, for sure. It's but I mean, so they're, they're also the yeah. fact that, they, that the surveillance cameras hadn't picked anything up and, the, and that place was lined with surveillance cameras. I mean, there were some things that aroused suspicion. Well, that, right well, well that's, I think Brian made an important point about like, the collision of healthy skepticism yeah. with the historical truth that people are not generally believed on, on, on the soul. And when it That's becomes right. cynicism and when it becomes an excuse to ignore real crimes and real problems, then that's even worse. Yeah. Uh, this is a mystery still, though. Why would he do this if he did? What is the motive? That 
remains a mystery, and the police say, we just need to talk to him. He sat down with Robert, yeah. Robin Roberts, um, I don't remember if it was last week. Yeah, or last week. Last okay. week. And he, she, you know, she pressed him on some of this, so watch this now. Who the would make something like this up, or add something to it, or, or whatever it may be? I can't, I can't even, I'm an advocate. I'm pissed off. What is it that has you so angry? Is it the, the attackers? It's the is attackers, it... but it's also the attacks. It feels like if I had said it was a Muslim or a Mexican or someone black, I feel like the doubters would have supported me a lot much more, a lot more. And that says a lot about the place that we are in our country right now. Uh, it's more uncomfortable to watch it now, knowing sure. all, all of the questions that the Chicago police have gone public with now. Yeah, I, I watched that last week, viewing him as an activist. I view it now, viewing him as an actor, and wondering about whether acting is a part of this, uh, because it, it is, if, if he did orchestrate this hoax. Um, you know, these two men who were in custody last week, they've cooperated, they've provided evidence to the police. So it's now in his court, and, and we do need to hear more of his side of the story. As of Saturday night, his lawyers were saying he's the victim of a hate crime, so he was not changing his tune. Oh, that, that's important to note, but yeah. Charles, he also very quickly, even in that interview, is elevating it to an exemplar of a national conversation, saying this uh -huh. is about the ugliness of the national conversation, and I'm the victim of that. And, and, and that first performance back, I believe in West Hollywood, saying I'm, I'm gonna come back from this. So by elevating it and making it a national metaphor, mm. what is he trying to communicate? If it's all at the bottom of, of, of a mean, hoax, not, not, not that you can yeah. get inside his head, but he's the one raising this to a national element, which uh, elevating it to a national conversation, which makes the possibility of it being a hoax that much more devastating. Well, listen, if Jesse has done what the Chicago police say he has done, it's not just that he's an actor, Brian. This is an insane person. This is, this is a psychopath. Like, and, and, and there's nothing in his history that suggests that he's a psychopath. But why so that, is it just that, that is why it's so hard for everybody to, it, that's why people are waiting, trying to figure out, like, please go back and interview him, uh, Chicago mm -hmm. PD. But we need to understand what, what's the motive, because nothing, I met him one time. He was the sweetest, it was just in passing at, the, at, at Essence Fest, and I was with a, 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 a girl I went to college with, she's a big fan, and he, she had to have a picture. He was the most gracious person. And I think that that's the, the kind of feeling that people have about him. So if you did this, we need to know, like, are you crazy? Like, are you, did you literally, like, lose it? Or, because nothing is adding up about why he would do this. Well, one thing's for certain, this story is not over yet.